muted. We're doing stuff. We're gonna be live. God, I hate this show. <laughs> it just drains my soul. Hey, folks. Uh, it's Tuesday. You know what that means. Welcome to Murder Hobo, Inc. Between the Rolls. It's our stab at a talk show where we go ahead and discuss the previous week's games as well as something interesting. Tonight, we're probably only going to do stupid shit. So, uh, But we'll see. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to buy our cool stuff, it's down there. If you want to join us in Discord, it's down there. Most importantly, if you want to see on the talk show or in one of the one shots, let us know. Mhobo Inc. Both on Twitter and Gmail. Let us know. Uh, we will go ahead and see what we can do because you can't do any worse than us. Certainly can't do any worse than me. I mean, come on, let's face it. I'm just winging this shit. Uh, tonight, like I said, we're going to go ahead and discuss last week's uh, games, which was uh, something called uh, Gen Con, I think. Well, I'll happily tell you everything about the first five minutes that I watched. <laughs> and littered the chat with your crap. Uh, and, then, and then we're going to discuss uh, the Artificer and maybe the Psionicist. Psionicist. Sonic, sci, sci, sci. I forgot this, to read about the psionicist, so I'm not going to help you. I read about oh, it, man. and I have the perfect summation in fuck that thing. That is stupid. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and uh, introduce you to our uh, panel. If you haven't seen this show before, uh, you won't recognize any of these guys. Uh, but if you have, you do. First off, David. David, who are you? And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm David. <laughs> I can usually be found here on Between the Rolls or on our Thursday night show, uh, Cacophony. So that's like a rolling soap opera, not a campaign that we have going. So, so you can find me here. Uh, if you want to find me on Twitter, you can find me at Bardic Scribbler. So anyway, that's me. There you go. Carol, you're up next. Hi everyone, I'm Carol. I am the uh, one of the resident commission mini painters because one of our campaigners is also a co uh, commission mini painter. They are I, a long time gamer, uh, sometime GM. Uh, and tonight I'm going to be totally spitballing because I don't know dilly shit about Psyonic. There's nothing on DD, I don't have it on DD Beyond to research it so. They I do know a little about the artificer, so this is going to be an interesting episode. Yep, 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 yep. And last but not least, Kyle. Hi, everybody. I'm Kyle. Yeah! And yep. I have something important to say about <laughs> Oddfish Games. Oddfish Games, they're great. They have adventure sense. They have books. They even had a special scenario at Gen Con this year which I watched. I didn't watch. I'm lying about that entirely. I have to be honest. But I'm sure I would have watched it if I could. I couldn't watch it. I, I, I don't think it was uh, published, actually. And it wasn't even published. But you know what? They have adventure sense. Like these right here. Take, for example, the ancient library. Or what's that? That's the uh, Rustic Tavern. Rowdy Tavern. Mm, the Rowdy, Rowdy Tavern. tavern. See, oh, reading, man. It uh, smells like Bourbon Street ancient library and i smell meat roasted meat macaroni and cheese mashed potatoes that's what you just ate jackass that's <laughs> not the adventure sense. that's what he's still <laughs> eating <laughs> right, did you put that on there put what on there yeah of course the adventure it. sense it looks like salt because they're edible right yes yeah, totally it looks edible. like it looks like candy you know edible. i would eat it uh, oh, don't. Warning, don't eat. Don't eat it. It's not tapioca <laughs> or anything like that for I bubble might have tea. To go to no. the hospital later. <laughs> our, our sponsors just had a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell them to eat it. Don't eat it, folks. It's not a Tide Pod. Those are safe. Oh, God. <laughs> Tide Pods are not safe either. <laughs> Okay, with that being said, uh, we would like to thank Oddfish Games uh, as one of our sponsors, as well as Pirate Dog Dice, uh, who give us dice. Pirate Dog Dice, proof and that you can polish a turd. Dog. You know yeah. what, you, you are getting the crap dice one of these days. As soon as I hope so. Up. I've been talking this up for years <sighs> now. Yes, I even years. want the poop no. emoji dice, hey, man. Hey, <laughs> Frank, I know how to fix him. Take, get that sewer scent. And in, somehow infuse that into his dice. 
Then we get crappy smelling dice too. I, I think the res. I think you'd have to put toothpicks in the resin to make it smell. But yeah, I, and it, honestly, I was gonna get in the sewer one, and I just botched the order, which means I'm gonna have to uh, spend a small amount of money because these things are like five bucks a piece, and if you order enough, you get one free. So, folks, and they stink. They will stink up your game like that. <laughs> In a nice positive way, if you unless you nice get sewage, <laughs> unless you get sewage, and then you can taste it right about here. Oh God! I was going to uh, say my wife thanks you because I was going to make her smell the sewage first. You know, nice and, partnership. And, and with the injury, you know, she would have been powerless to get away. Exactly, she can't move <laughs> her head. It's just like <laughs> you could have just taped it to her forehead. Oh. Uh, yeah. Folks, as uh, we pointed out, last week was Gen Con. Uh, some of us got to participate. Some of us did not. Uh, tonight, we will go ahead and discuss these shows. Only one of the shows made it to our YouTube archive because of a technical glitch. Uh, we're sorry. But that show stunk anyway because it featured David. Uh, just oh. kidding. Just just kidding. <laughs> it, it, no, I'm not kidding. It stunk because of David. Yeah, yeah. Uh, David, why don't you lead us into Triton's Crown? Okay, Triton's Crown. So I'm going to try, for the sake of brevity, to break this down into chapters. So here we go. Okay. Who played? It was myself, Matthew, it was Chris, and it was Travis. And you can call me Ishmael. And you can call me Ishmael, which would have been great for that for that episode anyway uh we had a wizard cleric uh barbarian and rogue and that'll be a running theme for the next uh recap anyway uh lazy anyway, dm the wizard named eplo we had a, a cleric that was me formir uh grong the barbarian travis and uh chris was klepto the rogue anyway chapter one hurricane uh our adventurers are waiting at a hurricane in a tavern called the Rusty Nail. Uh, we pick up a job to uh, retrieve a package from the ship called the Triton's Crown. We are killing time by playing a poker game in the tavern. Uh, cleric wins, you know, the largest hand. Guy can't pay, pays us with scavenger necklace. That. So, which kind of leads into the story. Anyway, okay. We get scavenger necklaces out of uh, as payment uh, for the ante on the poker game. Anyway, chapter two, Red Tiger. Okay, enter the captain of the Red Tiger, Captain Hartley. She's quite a looker. Anyway, <laughs> Marriott Hartley. Marriott Hartley. There we go. Oh, they're not going to get that, Frank. <laughs> it's an old one. So my Saturday um, group would have gotten it. The yeah. Red Tiger is the only ship old. to survive, to make it back to port from the hurricane. Two other ships were actually lost at sea. One of them being the Titan's Crown, the one that we're supposed to re retrieve the package from. Anyway, am I getting this right so far? Okay, good. So, uh, yeah, so while we're uh, entered the captain, Captain Hartley, uh, she is dealing with a little survivor's guilt because they're the only ship that made it back. Drinking like a fish, to put it lightly. Uh, we take that as a cue to try to seek passage because she actually wants to go back and try to retrieve bodies that might, for the souls that might have been lost at sea. So anyway, our resident rogue uh, decided to do a charisma check and try to seduce the captain. Yeah, he didn't have to try very hard. <laughs> anyway, that ended up with a big sloppy kiss, us getting uh, the ride to the, the shipwreck, and that's where we're going to go try to retrieve our package. Bullshit, you guys didn't go to the shipwreck. <laughs> well, we didn't make it, so... <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we'll get to that. Next chapter, Tempest. Okay, as we're making our way out to the, the position out at sea, there is a Tempest. It is basically in the eye of this hurricane, there is a large funnel raising up from out of the ocean. And that marks where the ships were possibly lost. So for us to retrieve the package to go, to go in, we had to take a launch boat off of that. So anyway, 
we got our passage. Uh, we take a launch boat, not Tempest. very reluctantly. Back from the 80s. <laughs> Back from the 80s. Oh, I love that game. Anyway, um, so we take the launch boat out. Uh, we end up going overboard. We actually, I actually kicked somebody overboard to test the necklace. <coughs> this is your cleric. Anyway, uh, that ensued in underwater shenanigans. Uh, we had to deal with hostile sea life. And also because this water funnel was sucking everything up into it, we had to deal with wreckage co actually coming at us. So, yes. Chap uh, the next chapter is Maelstrom. Okay. Well, uh, we decide to investigate the maelstrom instead of getting our objective. So we, in, we inspect the maelstrom. We find within the maelstrom, after being pummeled by wreckage and just the force of the maelstrom, that there's gems in a, cir in a circular pattern at the center of the maelstrom. And of course, we- Was we that Titan's it. crown? It could have been, and I asked, and no, it was not. So- What it could have anyway. been. Oh. It may be in the future. Right. You never know. <laughs> so we wisely decide to grab the gems. So we had to push our, our barbarian through the wall of water to get to the center to retrieve the gems. Didn't go well at all. So, yeah, characters almost dying. Almost happened because you had a novice cleric. Anyway. All right. So. Rookie. Yes. So within that, with the wreckage being pulled towards us, the wreckage of the Titan's crown makes its way towards us. Next chapter, twi no, Titan's crown. Okay. The wreckage is apparent now, so we proceed to uh, investigate it. Some of us are down on hit points. Folks, when you're playing D&D &D and you're taking damage, Please tell your cleric you're running low. It's like video games. You call out for healing. I'm sorry. Not going to go chasing after you. <laughs> so I'm what, kidding. You don't the raid windows to see that the person's running out and hit the heal button on them? No, no. We don't have those in D&D, Carol. Really? Done. I usually just like, write them down on Pathfinder. cards. Actually, not exactly true. You actually, that's a feature, and uh, you can have that in Roll20, actually. Anyway, we did not have that. So, <laughs> so I digress. We move on. Okay. So, anyway, enter the wreckage. So, at this point, we entered the wreckage, and the key phrase we're going to need a bigger boat. Yeah. Applies to this. Uh, we encountered basically freaking jaws coming out. So after that, not all of you, not all of us, but you know, thanks to volute scrolls. If you don't know what they are, email us or whatever. David, you just learned about volute scrolls. Yeah, I did. They are yeah, freaking yeah. awesome. Yeah. They got three good ones. Let me tell you about the loot <laughs> scrolls. Okay, they are scrolls that you can open for an effect that anything can happen. So let me put it to you like this. Three scrolls were open. First one, shark in a haystack. The second one, rainbow bunnies. Okay. Third one completely changed the motives of a character. And yeah, fuck you, Klepto. You left us. Anyway. Klepto just left? Yep. Yeah, he Took got off. the contrariness. He got the contrary strong. one. Oh. So, so anyway, that's pretty much where, how it ends. Klepto leaves us in the lurch, but because of the rainbow bunnies, we escape. <laughs> Frank was pissed about that. <laughs> Four and, hit points on one of them. That yeah, with four four hit points left on on uh, our barbarian. <laughs> and anyway, uh, yeah, Frank paid me back by smacking me with a ship. So shitty rolls. The, the rolls giveth and the rolls taketh away. Now, if you want the loot scrolls, they are a free product at Adventures in Fill Bar. So go to tinyurl.com slash adventure in Fill Bar and look for the loot scrolls. It's like HOF 
three or something like that. Go, <laughs> go to go to Drive Through RPG. Put in Volute V O L U T E. Go ahead and get your own copy. They're free. Uh, it's cooler if you print them off. It's way cooler if you seal them in wax. But hey, you know, throw them in an envelope. Fuck with people that way. Uh, they nice. they are Philip, fun. I broke the seal. Look at that. Yeah, uh, what it's was it? It's a ton of fun. <laughs> Game though, because I never, I'm the worst person to give anything like that to because I never remember to use it. Well, that's okay. David was the cleric and he got magical healing lips. How many times did you use those? None. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> no one told him how low their hair points were. I would have been blowing kisses to everybody. No, like, I you think take I'm some healing. Tea. You take okay. some healing. <laughs> so, they're called Caduceus lips. And yes, I should have used them. So. Oh, Caduceus lips? Mm -hmm. Like that character? Not no, 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 critical. No, no. <laughs> no yes, crossovers, yes, Carol. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I, no. I, don't, I don't know who that is. So. Caduceus as in healing. So anyway. Caduceus is in the symbol, the veterinary or the medicine. Right, no, I know what it is. Although I didn't think, that, <laughs> I didn't think that's how you pronounced it, but that's okay. I yeah. am probably wrong. Now the fourth, the, the fourth member actually accidentally opened up his but pointed out that he would not have used it his was talk like foghorn leghorn the entire time which would that would have been awesome. i say i say i say i cast I, <laughs> I say cleric i need healing so yeah <laughs> so that that would that one would have been uh pretty cool but yeah due to due to a glitch uh it is lost to Forever. the sands of time or is it <laughs> Who knows? Maybe one of our adventuring team goes off and digs it out. Uh, hard to say. Uh, but yes, that was Friday night. Uh, they That featured second level players. Uh, and then we turned around on Saturday and did a different adventure with the same characters at fourth level. Carol, you were in that. Uh, tell us a little bit about Asimov's missive. Well, first of all, I think you have it backwards. Oh, I do have it backwards. Fourth was Friday and yeah. That it was second <coughs> level, um, and I think they all got scrolls. I was the only who got it, and I didn't. As I said, I never remembered or use them regardless. And I and after I looked, you know, I think I'm glad. Although I have no idea what the disadvantage would have been on. It says reader sings for the next ten minutes. Disadvantage on. You never have actually specified what the disadvantage was. Um, you know, it could be anything. It was, but I think one of the other reasons too is that there really wasn't any combat in ours as opposed to theirs. There was uh, it seemed crab like, uh, fighting. <laughs> the, there was crab fighting, but I mean, I wasn't in the ring. So I will get to that. So our so Asimov's missive, that was what we were supposed to deliver. Uh, we, we got a note to give to Asimov, the inventor, I believe he was. Um, so we know nothing about uh, Crap, what's the name of the damn town? I almost said cacophony, and that's totally right. Cathaway. Cathaway. So we the home of the UCFC, for God's sake. I know it's only UCFC, which is the crab fights. Um, I know I should have realized that it was probably going to end up there, but uh, I signed up for this game. I actually did sign up for the game. I was going to play it at Gen Con when there was a Gen Con in person, uh, but Obviously, that didn't happen. So I was like, screw it. I'm going to sign up for it anyways. Uh, I wanted to play play one of his games and see how it was with maybe some more traditional, less wacky players. That's what at least what I was thinking. I was like, all right, I'm going to have to be. <laughs> Not so much. It was like a very typical night of Murder Hobo Wink. They were awesome. They were awesome. They were wacky. They were they were a bunch of murder hobos. Uh, I really hope you guys come back. If you're watching this, I really hope you come back and, and play again someday. You, they were a ton of fun. Um, yeah, we had a married couple. Uh, it said, boy, talk about the family who st you know, stays together, plays together. So or, I don't know if I get that wrong. Whatever. Plays together, stays together. Plays together, stays together. There you go. You're, you're thinking of Sunday's Margu campaign. Three generations, folks. They'll kill everything. So, um, so anyways, we get off the boat and we have to try to figure out where we're bringing this missive because we don't know anything about this city. Um, 
but we actually, so I'm going to try to give just a couple highlights. We, so we, we do get some directions. Um, if you want to watch it, watch it because this one is on, this one is on our YouTube archives and probably still on Twitch. Uh, so I said, I don't, Oh, I remember. So the first thing. Like she did, didn't you know, play. <laughs> folks, I played like, what did I say? Like eight games over the week, seven or eight games over the weekend. Okay. So, you know, uh, I played a Thanks, lot. Thanks, Carol, for bragging that in. That's right. Yes. Yeah, I couldn't play, get Carol. into an event. Because you I, took them all. <laughs> here, there's your crown, Carol. Where it probably <laughs> looks like an eyelash. <laughs> hey, you know, it's like, you know what? I'm going to do Gen Con online. I'm going to do Gen Con online. So um, so I did, I fully participated in it. Um, and it was so much fun. But then I digress. Anyways, um, so the first thing, we were on the docks. And that's right. We have what? We had a frog. We have frogs, right? G Gi big giant toad. Giant toad. Yep. A giant toad came out. Uh, I believe he entangled our poor wizard. Uh, who managed to, hey, he actually got away, which is usually unusual for a wizard to do just by pure strength and dex. They're not usually known for having really good strength and dex. They're the smarties. Um, but we defeated the frog pretty easily. Uh, that would ended up being, other than the, the crab fight at the end, which really only involved one other player, that was really only real combat night because... There was one other little spot of combat because we we came around and we found a bar, a really seedy, trashy bar. But we could go through that to actually sneak through to get to the des our destination to Azamas house. And the other players they wanted their characters they wanted to stop in and get a drink. Hence, I was thinking, okay, here goes the scenario right off the rails. As I said, they were just as bad as the rest of us. So we go into this bar and how can I ever forget the wheel at the back. You look behind the bartender and we saw uh, this poor guy stuck up on a wheel. Actually, was it a what? rowdy tavern by chance? Was a rowdy tavern. Uh -oh. Oh, oh, what was the name uh -huh. of the what was the name of the bartender? Who did you model? That was a friggin' pop culture reference, I believe. What was the name of the bartender? Oh, pop he doesn't. Culture reference? What are you talking about? Frank, I'll, I'll look it up while you uh, ideas. We never make those. No. no. It's not Philo We're better than because that that's, that's a different uh, game. No, it was salt, no, that was a different one. Salty. I think we were calling him Salty, but he had no. Salty, name. yeah, it was Salty's yeah. Tavern. Yeah. I thought he had another. Anyways, behind him was this poor guy strung with the wheel with, I think, a gag and tied to the wheel. And people were throwing sharp implements at him. And find out, well, apparently he was, uh, he had some debts. He already was, a, you know, a, a thieving, welch, a gambling welcher. So they stuck him up there. But I'm playing Klepto the Thief. And it's something sort of sat very wrong with me. And so much for behaving myself. I go back there and I try to free him. I tried to start untying the ropes. And uh, that's right. I had a ponytail. It's Klepto had a ponytail to start with. Klepto did not <laughs> now she's got a cute little swing bob now she's going. she's got a bob cut because uh, in came one of those flying implements and took off her, her ponytail. To which I turned around and murdered the guy. I think it was the guy who threw, threw the whatever it was. The axe. you don't even know. Wait, nice. Yeah, just fucking know. kill people. Yep, I just murdered him. <clears throat> what can I say? I, you know, I didn't realize. Actually, I didn't realize they were going to drop so easily. So it was not really my intention to kill someone, but it is murder hobo ink, so it falls right perfect. And. We pretty much acted like it. somebody brought up it was like the canteen in Star Wars where everybody just kind of looked for a moment and then went right back to the normal business. Um, but we decided it was best to get the frick out of there. Uh, so we did. So I left. And unfortunately, I did not get the guy off the wheel. So I didn't have time. Uh, so we went across to Asimov's uh, and he wasn't home. His rude, nasty bitch maid. Uh, mature audiences only, by the way. I don't think anyone said that. I wasn't uh, ready for that. 
Oh, I no. was offended. I'm Severely. Sure you were. Yeah. I'm emailing sure. the host. Yes. I'll file a complaint. He wouldn't even lift a finger. I don't know why he hires such a useless maid. She wouldn't take the missive. Oh, she, she, <laughs> but she's such a bitch. I don't even want to touch her. Ugh. Um, but, Says the girl with the bob. <laughs> What's wrong with short hair? I used to have short hair. Not anymore. But Certain when people was... should have short hair. Okay. Klepto should not. Well, it'll grow back. So, anyway, she, she sent us... Guys, sent we us... have something more important to talk about, and that's women baldness. It happens to them, too. Not to me. Are you sure? Oh. It's looking a little thin in the bangs. No. No, because I cut it that way. My eyebrow is twitching. Jesus. <laughs> Funny, she wouldn't take the message. Um, she was sort of helpful into sending us in a direction. There were two places he could have been. Uh, one was at the theater slash museum. I'm still not sure. I guess it's a museum. That was a theater. Uh, we, went, we went in there and had an encounter with a changeling who tried to steal her, uh, steal our Clark's place by becoming her. But it was pretty easy to suss out who was the real one, who was the fake one. And you were the imposter. What? You were the imposter. I was not actually, you never made her look like me. You started out with the Clark. What the hell? Who else did you, you made her look like somebody else in the party. And was it was barbarian. Barbarian. barbarian? The barbarian. Yeah, so it wasn't me. I was not the imposter. Uh, so we, but anyway, she gave us, uh, she more or less confirmed that the information we have is true and where the location of the other place we needed to go to, which is where the craft fights are, which is the Porcullis uh, bar. So we went there next and we walk in and, and figure out how to get to the craft fight. You know what? You'll have to watch the show to figure that out. Uh, spoilers, you know, or maybe you'll have to come and play. And then you have to figure it out in character. <coughs> or not. Um, t- or not. Uh, so we figured out how to get into the crab fights, which is underneath, and it's all secret. Uh, and boy, that is quite a place. I mean, you've got a big, you've got a good sized arena, and then you also have like that secret little room, the secret room in the back where all where a bunch of shenanigans goes on. There, it's always a secret room in the back. Always. Um, so let's see. I remember. I remember. Oh, I remember. We everyone bet around, but me. I was busy looking for uh, Asimov, and they all lost. I would have been right too. I had the right friggin' pick, but he wouldn't let me bet on it. I'm like, that's fine. But that worked out it for me in the end because then our barbarian, you know, he wasn't the smartest person out there, you know. So he interpreted crab fights as um, he was going to go fight the crab. So they did. They brought out a big green, it was greeny, and it was a really large crab with uh, with da- two daggers or one? Two. Da- and both its pincers, right? Mm-hmm. So that was a rather uh, nasty fight. But we all decided, we, hey, he agreed, one to go in the ring. I actually bet on him. And most of the people bet against him. So I ended up walking away with, well, I said, I walked away initially with like 87 gold. But meanwhile, our clever wizard, uh, he disguised himself, or he cast disguised self, or he made himself look like Asimov. And he managed to get into the back room and convince them that he was Asimov and the other guy was the changeling, the real Asimov changeling. So they basically kicked him out. And then they tried to shake him down for the money that Asimov actually owed them, which is why he was in the back room. So the fight finishes up. He just said, our barbarian wins, and I win a whole bunch of money. Uh, and then we go in to retrieve our wizard to find out that the only way we're really going to retrieve him without a big fight was to pay the 40 gold that his debt was. But I'm like, you know what, regardless, I'm still going to end up ahead. So I chipped in the 40 gold to pay off his debt. Sucker! 
Yeah, but I still ended up uh, way ahead of where it would have been. You know, what I have started the night with like 10 gold. So I had, you know, 47 at the end. Uh, that's that's still a good night. That's an exceptional night, actually, unless I'm off, unless Klepto's off, well, Klepto, uh, Kleptoing things uh, and selling them. But even then, 40 gold, that's a lot of gold. So it was a fun, fun scenario. Um, it was it was interesting. I said they were a very fun group of players. And I really do hope they we see them again. Um, I really hope Mary is interested and drags her hubby along. I can't remember her hubby's name. Was it? John or James. Yeah, it was, I think. I want to say it was John. Jim. It's one of the right. Uh, it was John or James. I, it was James because it, it was, was James. That's right. John was the wizard. John was the other one. So, uh, yeah, I, I've got to agree. Uh, for both games, I enjoyed uh, all my players except for Carol and David. Uh, <laughs> we the other, suck. The others all all actually brought it all together and made it worth having. Uh, but no, seriously, if you uh, missed Gen Con online, uh, there are still plenty of online conventions uh, this season. Yes. Go ahead and sign up. Uh, just uh, make sure that you understand the rules beforehand uh, and ask any questions you may have uh, because your host should be able to answer them all and be pretty forthcoming about things. Uh, but I highly recommend it. I also highly recommend this show. Uh, again, we're doing this for fun. Don't feel that, oh, uh, you know, I, I'm not very good or, you know, I, I don't understand the rule. You know what? Screw that shit. Okay. If you want to have fun, just go out and have fun. Uh, if you don't feel like wrecking somebody else's fun, start with us. We don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it. You can't do it. Yeah. So. yeah, you, you can't fuck this show up. Uh, no, nope, and no show on Sunday. Uh, we, uh, I, I needed a break. Uh, I had other things I had to do. Uh, we re resume our normal schedule this week. So we've got Cacophony on Thursday. We've got Campaign on Saturday. And I believe we have Margu on Sunday. Again, three generations planned. Uh, the Saturday Campaign, uh, uh, maybe winding down. Who knows? Uh, they're real close to getting two out of the three things. Uh, that winding down. That's only two out of the three things. There's a lot. There's more you can do with this. Oh, That's yeah, there's a lot more. Wow. I get, I but maybe this. he's tired, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I'm done with your guys. <laughs> We're in the camp. I'm done. I'm over it. That's right. And you yeah. meet a lich and you're dead. Yeah, you guys, you guys will most likely be ninth level if all of you survive. Uh, and that is a big if. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you, have, you have some headaches coming at you. Uh, that being said, folks, uh, look at other conventions, look at other streams, jump on there, have some fun. Trust us. Uh, for the most part, you won't screw anything up. Uh, our second part of the show tonight is talking about the dumbass classes. Uh, Speaking of headaches. Oh, yeah. Whoa. We've got Artificer. And maybe we'll discuss psionicists because we all know how much I love that. Maybe we will. I mean, I don't know anything. Does anybody here know anything about psionicists? And I know a little. Carol. They were a really, you know what? I would like to see the psionist class, not the actual class itself, but how they designed the class because that was very pick and choose, pick and choose. And I really like that idea with, uh, Drinking. Yeah, exactly. With drinking, because you. Oh, what is that <coughs> drink called when you get everything in the fountain? Suicide. You just go down. Suicide. Yeah, suicide. A suicide. That's. I it. like the idea of a suicide classes. That gives uh, people a better range of making interesting characters. Chris Perkins and Jeremy Crawford were drinking that day. So oh, that there was. you go. <laughs> So let, let's go I'm ahead kidding. and deal with the artificer first. And Kyle uh, reads the rules better than any of us, so we'll go ahead and let oh, him talk for a while. Why are we talking about me? No. <laughs> uh, so tell us about the artificer class since Josh didn't answer my emails. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come that's, on. That's right, Josh. I'm calling your ass out. We've seen your ass. I can call it out. Oh, God. Strangely enough, the two asses that you've seen on this stream both probably played the artificer the most. <laughs> probably. 
<laughs> Must be the class. So Kyle, it, it, tells, it's the class. tell you us about the artificer. Uh, so the artificer came out around what three three point five. Sure, that uh, sounds about right. Of to Dungeons me. and Dragons, it's, along it's with so Keith Baker's Eberron setting, it's which is where. It came was that Carol? Carol, are you talking over me as I make <laughs> good <laughs> and correct <laughs> points? <laughs> How <laughs> dare you! <laughs> How dare you! Okay. I dare because you do it to me, so it's only fair. It's only fair. Thank you for wasting everyone's time, Carol, <laughs> while you did that. I could have been telling people about the Artificer. Uh, the Artificer is a class that has sprung from uh, 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 the Keith Baker Eberron settings, uh, where the idea is that it's a little bit more steampunk, a little bit more noir and swashbuckling, um, and the idea that instead of going... Um, um with say combustion electricity they decided that they used the resources at hand magic uh and that was the new science so instead of having crossbows which are fired by a taut string launching something forward you might have this itty bitty tiny arrow that you nudge across the crossbow table which then ignites ruins and sends it spiraling across I, I sorry, I've been reading Keith Baker's uh, uh, um, little articles he does every once in a while. They're fun, really fun <laughs> to imagine. Uh, but from that, uh, the artificer was born, and they use magic as a science uh, to create um, their style of magic without necessarily having to study like a wizard or be born with it like a sorcerer or cheat like a warlock. Uh, but or be stupid like a psionicist. Amen. Oh, Amen. Jesus. And uh, at that point, this is where you get a lot of the technical <clears throat> players who want to be inventive, who want to be uh, the gunsmith who created the very first gun in D&D so they could shoot a dragon for getting off their lawn. And a lot of other fun stuff. Yeah. It's the min-maxing class, folks. <laughs> there is it is. the min-maxing? I, I is... find it. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, who was that goblin I played a while ago? Oh, I, I forgot it was its name. It was part of the Udu clan. It was, it was part of the Udu clan, yeah, but he only had one limb, and everything else was a mechanical arm, which turned into some sort of explosive device. <laughs> Oh yeah, that was funny. That was really <laughs> that was funny. Great. Yeah, it was or awesome. If you look at some it. of the archetypes, you could make uh, Doctor Otto Octavius, yeah, Steel Defender, that. baby. You could. <laughs> it's it's the class of the dreamers. It's not stupid. Now, yeah, okay. Well, I, I'm gonna throw my two cents in here, which is normally unusual because uh, you guys know this shit better than I do there said it uh but to oh, me, let me drink it in oh oh we know this no 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 no, no. scott has to drink oh uh, so, uh but yeah one of the things i think you hit on was the steampunk aspect and when it, when i read the artificer and the artificer part two uh because i have had limited experience with it i.e josh and kyle uh, that is what I got. I got I got the steampunk flavor, uh, only it was like steampunk diet bullshit. It tasted awful, like it was from RC Cola. Uh, no, no offense, RC Cola, but you aren't one of our sponsors. Uh, and I just, I, I liked it, but here's the thing. I think put it where it belongs in Spelljammer. Mm. Well, That's I mean, they kind of did with Eberron. So. Yeah. Yeah, but leave it out of this game. My two cents. Okay, uh, that being said, Carol, your two cents on the Artificer. I had tried it once, but I don't think I artificed it very well. Um, I think it's 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 not the easiest class to learn and to sit down and do a one-shot with. I think it's one of those classes It's better to uh, start from the beginning and learn the all the different things. It's, I think it's a hugely diverse <laughs> class i think you can you can build almost and you can be almost any role with it i don't know about healing but you can be you know, you you can you can build yourself a suit of really cool armor I th I, I, you know you can you make all sorts of gadgets and things i think it's a it's a fun one 
if you have a lot of imagination, if you have, if where you can really have fun on the role play aspects uh, of it. I mean, I was like, as I was looking a little bit into it today uh, when I had a few minutes, um, but you know, as that's that's, I said, I just think it's said it's something very where you can be very very versatile. What the hell are you doing, Kyle? He is an artificer. He's turning that into yeah. a cannon. That is fit. true. Yes. Okay. Well, I, I love the class. I'm a crafty person, so you know, forge cleric, bullshit. Give me an artificer every day. Because they're I, smart and they're the I, other intelligent class. I think the one I'd like, I think if I was going to try, if I was going to rebuild, I think the one I'd like to try is like the alchemist because throwing around bombs and such and making potions and things, I think that'd be, that would be fun to do. But, um, but so yeah, I think it's something that you have, a, you have a ton of fun with, but I think it's also a more complicated class to learn. Fighters like so easy, and then I've got this. Where I've got nine million things. I started when I did the one shot. I don't remember what level we were for that one shot because that was your one of your one shots, Kyle. It was the train one? We were I don't. Artif oh, okay, yeah, you did the for the Eberron esque. I don't remember that. Did I die during that one, Carol? <laughs> you, you may have. Yeah. <laughs> You did, yeah, yeah, I think you did, yeah. Yeah, I think I did too when you guys blew me off the train into the fucking mountain. No, well, you went into the river, but... Oh, no, no, he went into the mountain. <laughs> Slid into the river. <laughs> I remember Once I the rain came to wash him off the rocks, he may have, yeah. Sorry, Carol, would you like to go ahead? Do you yeah, not no. like being interrupted? I know I didn't earlier, but... I get constantly interrupted, so I'm kind of used to it. <laughs> you know, it happens all the freaking time. And you handle it well, unless you're whining about it, and then not True. so much. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even know what I'm whining. Gotta rise above it, Carol. Rise above it. Be the cream, not the curd. Ooh, Too bad. Every... They're delicious, though. Poutine, baby. Actually, they are. I've had, oh yeah, poutine is so good. But So on this episode, we discussed poutine and curds. <laughs> nice. Nope, that's, that's... That's the title of our episode. But I like the versatility, I like the creativity. But I think it's a compl very complicated class. And you know, I'm, I'm wondering why they had him, uh, an artificer, get chemical, what is it? Chemical savant at 14th level. You'd think that Alchemy a, would be easier than fucking construction, especially for the alchemo, alchemical homunculus. For God's sake, you're creating a being, uh, and that comes before learning how to do potions. I'm with you. I, I, I just, are you reading the Unearthed Arcana or the official class? That's the official class. It uh, was unearthed. the Arcana, but it's the official oh, class. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I this, this, is, done the this is V2, so this must be the official. V2 is it. Yeah. Okay, David, what do you got? All right. So, yeah, artificers. Yeah. So I'm going to do my best, uh, my best Jesse Pinkman and go arcane science, bitches. So nice. here we go. Nice. Stay uh, out of my domicile. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, artificers are the, or artificers, however you want to pronounce it. It's up to you. Anyway. They're, they're magic-wielding engineers is basically what they are. It's the steampunk era uh, version of uh, Dungeons & Dragons. So uh, there are, uh, as of now, four subclasses for it. And each of those subclasses are, are different aspects of pretty much arcane science. Uh, the first one is the alchemist, which we just mentioned. And technically, I mean, mechanically, it's probably the weakest. But I mean, it didn't stop me from creating one. I created one, and I play it like a plague doctor. And Good I like choice. it. I like yeah. that idea. I, so. I, that's by the way, I think that's excellent. I one thing is players that, that are very near and dear to my heart are the ones that don't always just min max and build the strongest character i love character players sorry players who can role play and get hey, the best 
out of something that's supposedly not you as can strong. do both. I always take a theme and I run with it, so that's You're, what I do. No, you can do both, but I, li I really like the ones who are totally, who come up with uh, these offbeat concepts that you don't think should work and, and totally do. There you go. Do, well, you like head wound, Harry. Head. <laughs> what are you guys talking uh, about? Frank, sorry, which was that, Frank? Uh, you love head wound, Harry. I have... Uh, <laughs> Alchemist gets Alchemical Savant at 5th level. So they changed it. Yeah! Uh, I was going to say, you guys are still in the Unearthed Arcana. Get yeah, because I got it at 14th. Wow, that's... yeah. See, that's, and mine literally says Unearthed Arcana. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, I'm going to uh, broach the other subclasses. Go uh, for it. Who's the next? Uh... The second one is actually an Unearthed Arcana that they're doing now and will probably become uh, part of a supplement that they're going to come out with, but it's the Armorer. And the Armorer is basically you make a, almost like a living suit of arcane armor. So basically you're Iron Man. <laughs> so uh, you, it, it takes an action to, uh, you know, put it on, take it off. You can, on a long rest or a short rest, you can change the mode. You can change the mode from the tanking spec of the armor to the stealth spec. Uh, spec. Uh, the tanking one is, I'm trying to remember what it was called. I don't know, but it's basically charged power armor. You're, you actually use your fists as melee weapons or you can use them. Uh, in addition to anything else that you can create as an artifact. I mean, you're pretty much Tony Stark. So uh, there's the infiltrator mode where your armor is a little more form fitting. You can hide it under regular clothes. Uh, uh, it has uh, high stealth stats and things like that. So uh, after stealth, stealth. <laughs> who needs stealth checks? No, but the thing is, is with the, the armor. Uh, subclass when you go into infiltrator mode you are not at disadvantage for your armor so nice uh so after that you have the standard uh subclass which is artillerist i mean which i've got little notes that says pew pew kaboom so <laughs> basically <laughs> accurate, you very accurate basically you make an arcane cannon and uh one of the uh, things that i mean you you fashion firearms out of things like wands and stuff like that. So, I mean, the idea behind that, and then they kind of left it very vague. It's very vague because they want you, the player, to decide whether you're making an actual firearm or whether you're going with the Eberron style, which is they don't have gunslingers in Eberron, they have wand slingers. And so, your wand is a pistol, your staff is a blunderbuss. And your full size staff is your long range uh, uh, device to shoot firebolt at. One of the things that the artificer makes, it's part of your progression, is you create a homunculus, which is either like a pet or an assistant or something like that. Uh, we'll go into the next step of that. But anyway. It's Stewie. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, with the homunculus and all that, uh, for the artillerist, your homunculus is basically it's a sentient little like shoulder cannon. You can wear it like you know predator or whatever, and you can ha have it you know take position elsewhere, and you can you know triangulate fire and things like that. So it, it's really interesting. The artillerist uh, has has a lot of you know pretty cool things that you can do with it. But uh, the one that the one class that I liked and, and I like it and uh, I'll explain why because I mentioned the homunculus is the battlesmith. The battlesmith is the one that actually uh, creates like enhancements to items, like uh, enhancements to weaponry, armor, and things like that. And they can hand it out. Well, any of the the artificer subclasses can do it, but. That, that's your job is you're creating arcane items and you can pass it along to your party and stuff like that. But the thing that stands out the most about the, the Battlesmith is you create uh, an Iron Guardian and basically what it is, or steel, a steel defender. And uh, yeah, it's like a homunculus on steroids uh, and it, it becomes 
part of your party. Weightlifter. <laughs> I played Fenton, and Frank, you had a lot he of fun. Was great. You had a lot of fun bashing Roger around. Yes, I, cre- I did. Oh, I yeah. created a steel mastiff, and my character was a halfling. So he served as a mount. And he also, in the end, ran as a decoy for a dragon. So, you know, so- he, I could always rebuild him. So, <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, those are our subclasses in a nutshell. I mean, artif- artificers, artificers, they're a lot of fun. I mean, I like them. I know a lot of D&D purists hate them. But, you know, if you can no. find a place for them in your campaign, they're yes. awesome. They suck. So- they suck stones. Uh, okay, now comes my favorite part. One or party. What do you think a good adventure for the artificer is going to be? Don't worry. We're starting with David this time. Then go to Carol. Then go to Because <laughs> we're f- reverse ordering it this time. Okay, David. Uh, one or many. And what kind of scenario do you want? Well, many, of course. Oh, my God. One of uh, every subclass. <laughs> uh, I There's like the headache. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really liked uh, Kyle's thing for, you know, the um, the Eberron X thing with the great train robbery. That was, yeah. that was awesome. So yeah, that right would up, serve very well with artificers. Right up till I died, Carol. Yeah. Right up till I fucking died. <laughs> I so. have no freaking regrets. <laughs> nope. So. So that's my bit. If I would create something, I'd create it to where you could, uh, you have a party of every subclass. So, yeah. That works. But I also, like for a solo, I liked my Plague Doctors idea. And actually, something I'm writing has something similar in mind. What? So, you're writing something? Are when I get around to it. <laughs> you gonna jam it here, huh? 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 I, I'm a terrible DM, so I will pass that baby on to you guys. And oh, there's only one way to get to be a better DM, and that's DM. <laughs> that 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 is some honest advice right there. If you, we'll, we'll, you suck, we'll see. Keep going. I I have content ideas in mind. Going to be writing them out, but whether or not I'm a good DM, that's yet to be seen. So nope. I've got a lot of practice. Irrelevant. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> irrelevant. So. And you know, you know, you could be Gygax, and we would still run you out on a rail. Oh, yep. yes, well, sure. that that was Gary's thing, you know. It's uh, it's not the rules that matter; it's the spirit of the game. So. Exactly. So, yeah. if you don't think you're good, fucking practice. <laughs> uh, right. Carol, one or many? What kind of scenario? Oh well, I said I- I'm doing the, the type of scenario. Um, said so, as usual, I like the whole thing of uh, the scenario that you could do for whatever. I want, I would love to do a scenario where, and I like it where they have to find something so it's relevant. So, I I would love to do like a scenario where they're finding uh, the like this long lost formula for some great artifact that they can build later on. Um, but yeah, and this I said once again, like a lot of the others, just put it in a dungeon somewhere full of minions that are. Uh, specific to you know that that the uh, levels and such and how many and there you go but it's the, to me like finding a that secret formula to me would be fantastic and then to see then maybe even to keep playing after that to see what they do with it i think that would be interesting too okay, but that would do if it's said and you can do that you said you could do that as a solo or you could do that with many kyle I am thinking if we're going to try and find something, you have to find a Warforged Colossus and get it operating again. Oh, that's awesome. That is cool. Uh, So essentially, Warforged, another creation of the Eberron setting, uh, they went even so far as to make Colossus Titans uh, Warforged that have been deactivated and are kind of spread out and hidden around uh, the Eberron setting. But I mean, a group of uh, uh, artificers should be capable of bringing one back to life, right? Let's hold it. That's Judge Dredd. <laughs> <laughs> eh, I'll buy that. Uh, <laughs> the Immortal Clock 
of the world mm -hmm. is broken. Uh, uh, even though everything still seems to work, the clock is broken. Your team is sent in to fix it, which you do, but you shouldn't have because now it's working backwards. But then it's not really oh, working. Do you put a time limit on that one shot then? Or do you make it a, every not one a, shot you get younger and younger? Yeah, you have a disadvantage on using your tools because they're big boy tools and you're not. <laughs> That's right. So something, because I love the time travel aspect, even though our producer fucking hates the, hates it. There's a, there, there is dissension in this household when I bring up time travel. Yeah, oh, I know. Man. But, but that's yeah. my thought. Or, you know, meet yourself from the future. Marty, your kids. <laughs> yeah, but in some realities, you do that. And if you touch, yeah, this is going to sound great. If you touch yourself, you blow everything up. So every yeah, night. To me every night. Every night. Yep. Every night. <laughs> <laughs> About 10 minutes after the show. There we go. <laughs> and everybody think, just went. Did he? Did he just say? Did, what he, did he just? Say? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, ten minutes. Gee, I thought you the show would just kill all. You know, kill your soul and on well, that drive. Well, when we go off the air and I step away, that's what's happening. I'm not putting away <laughs> all my shit. I, that's what's happening. I had uh, such great ideas. Ah! <laughs> okay, and now the moment we've all been waiting for. Uh, who here likes the psionicist? Oh, we uh, still have time to talk about that. We should end the show early. No, we're we're gonna we're gonna end it on time. But uh, I just wanted to make sure. Uh, so only one of us likes the psionicist. Actually, oh, really? I don't have you like ever him? since I saw the movie Scanners as a kid, it was just like fuck yeah, <laughs> <laughs> old, old guy. <laughs> but Frank, to be true, though, I don't actually have an opinion because I've no one has ever played one in a party of mine, and I've never played one. I and there's like, and it's not in D and D Beyond. Like it's it, maybe it's in one of the books that you can get for D and D Beyond, but we don't own it, so I don't think I have anything to really research it. It's UA. You want uh, me I to run Blake, it down? I think Blake has uh, done it. Uh, yeah, go ahead and run it down real quick. Okay. Psionics is actually not a class, folks. Nope. Oh, it's nope. not. No, nope. it's hey, not. What? It's a bunch of subclasses. No, I'm talking now as in the oh, okay. revision now that was. A... Yeah. And just as a note, as of right now, psionics are kind of pigeonholed right now at Wizards of the Coast. Uh, they were going to have them revised. They did do a revision, but. Uh, the last I heard is they're going to scrap it for now. So. so wasn't it Mike that did that? Yeah. 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 So, I wonder why they scrapped it. So uh, yeah, I think he's might, still there. Just saying. Just saying. I don't know it why. Might have had something to do with it. Yeah. But it might have to do with uh, just how the abilities were sent to run. So basically, classes uh, that uh, serve uh, uh, that go with the psionics are the rogue class, the fighter class, sorcerer, and then wizards have like three spells that they can add to their, their spell book to give them psionic abilities. Uh, for the rogue, you have the soul knife. Basically, you're using psychic force to create your weapons. Uh, you have the fighter. Uh, fighter, you're basically a freaking Jedi knight. You're using telekinesis and yeah. Hey. Force yeah. push, force force pull. Yeah, it's all there. Uh, you have the sorcerer. Sorcerer, don't think more of the Sith kind of Palpatine kind of thing. So <laughs> anyway, uh, wizards, like I said, they have a few spells that they can add. Um, so, but one of the things about the uh, the the subclass itself is that, or the the subclasses that are that are listed, is that to use them, you have to use uh, a, a, a psychic currency called Psy. And basically what it is, 
<laughs> huh? See, it's key points. Key points. Basically, it is. But the thing about them is, you can use them to change your damage, and there is diminishing returns on that. Like for example, your power, uh, depending on the amount of side points that you put into it, is a D4. You put more more side points into it, it goes up to a D6. Maximum amount of side points go up to like a D8 or whatever. So uh, that is pretty much how you fuel your abilities. Uh, the other things that go with the Sionesis, I mean, aside from the race, which is G Githyanki, it's kind of uh, instilled in that and the lore that there are psionics. Um, one of the other things that came up, they came up with like five feats. Uh, they're in D&D &D Beyond. You'll be able to, to look it up if you have UA checked and uh, it will come up. Uh, it's things about telepathy, telekinesis. Uh, I think uh, you become like a psionic uh, adept or anything like that. So, you know, that's pretty much the rundown on psionics right now. Like I said, they don't have it as a full blown class yet. So, so what I'm hearing is it sucks just like it did in first and second edition. That's what I'm hearing. Pretty much. It still needs to be. <laughs> It's just waiting for the right person to perfect it. That's so. why Head Wound Harry will never suffer psychic damage because he's already stupid. <laughs> uh, let's move to final thoughts with Kyle. Oh. Um, <laughs> we caught him off. We're there already. <laughs> I, I can't believe we didn't do green screen on his shirt. Green screen on my shirt. It's Hitler, yeah. You know, Hitler was a psionicist. That's why he was a vegetarian and liked dogs. <laughs> I thought it was cats. Oh, no. He liked dogs. Yeah. Got it. That's your final thought? I think he froze. No, he didn't freeze. <laughs> I could see him blinking. Yeah, he's moving. <laughs> he's lap there. Is that your final thought? <laughs> Carol, final thoughts. Uh, um Unfortunately, I wish I knew more about these to talk better about them. But uh, I, I said at some Sorry, point, I, I said if I if I have a chance to to play a, a, I don't know what. Hmm? What are you saying, Kyle? He's I'm saying up. you need to be Otto Octavius, halfling, battlesmith. Get the steel defender as octopus arms. Never have to walk again. That would be a really cool concept. Um, no, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I tend to like, I like high fantasy. And to me, this kind of gets a little more modern. Um, oh, so no, no, no. Again, use magic as the science. Go with the Eberron, you know? Yeah, yeah sure. You could have spring boots to make you jump. Or you could just have little globes with grasshopper legs. And when you tap them together, your boots become enchanted with jump. And there you go. I said it might be something and someday I'll try I'll try or I'll, maybe I'll use the one I built for uh, Kyle's game more often but uh, I've got like a zillion other characters I want to play so we'll see we'll see I, I think it is a fun class though especially said if you can really role play up uh, all those crazy elements that you're creating with infusing things with magic I think that there's a lot that can be done there so cool beans. That's thought. David, final thought. Oh, God, this has been such a great week with Gen Con and these classes and all that. But Kyle, I think Roger 3, when I rebuild him, will be an octopus. Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, no, uh, Artificer, I love the class. I have been waiting for it to come out, but unfortunately my DM hates them, so I only got to play it once, and it was on... <laughs> on one of our one shots so and this dm hates him too so yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, he, magneto, he was trying to kill me fuck all of you magneto it is <laughs> exactly <laughs> take your octopus and show so, your ass why do you hate them they're not i don't think they're op by any stretch because like you i believe in high fantasy and unlike kyle no magic is not the science I, play I want flame flying. Then out of my how hand. do wizards work? Nobody cares. 
Exactly. <laughs> I am head wound Harry. That is what I, I hit things. Uh, folks, thanks for uh, joining us. Thanks for listening in. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive if you want to join us in chat. In Discord, uh, it's there. If you want to buy our cool shit, it's there. Uh, most importantly, if you want to see it on this show or on one of our one shots, hit us up, M Hobo Inc. Uh, on Twitter or at Gmail. Thank you very much to Pirate Dog Dice as well as oddfishgames.com for being our sponsor. Oddfish Games. They love, they love Kyle for some reason. Yay. Uh, but join us on Thursday for Cacophony. Uh, there's a couple things in the mix, so I'm not really sure what we're going to throw at them. Uh, hey, you and know then, who's an alchemist? Real life? Adventure Sense. That's, that, you know what? That, 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 is, that is a nice plug there. because uh, uh, You like are, artificers that, that, a little bit more now, don't you? No, artificers just a little, are so just a stupid. They're alchemists. <laughs> That's what they are, not artificers. It should have been a class all in itself. So. Artificers, they want to find new ways to go fishing. Yeah, of course. In there. Fuck, we should have ended this show a minute ago. Artifacts. That was a horrible <laughs> joke. Uh, Carol, you are next. your character is going to start at disadvantage in everything the rest of the year. Folks, <laughs> thanks for joining us. We'll see you on Thursday. Let's give them a big old Cacophony. dating game kiss and get the hell out of here. Cacophony. Uh, Deuces, lips, folks.